Hi all, welcome to Clear IAS. I am Dr. Remistri NPC, an educator at Clear IAS. This is the second video of the Decoding UPSC CSC series of videos. Today, we will be discussing about the second part of the GS1 syllabus, that is Indian history. We have already seen that the UPSC has given the GS1 syllabus as Indian heritage and culture, history and geography of the world and society. The syllabus of Indian history is further explained as Modern Indian history from about the middle of the 18th century until the present. Significant events, personalities and issues. The freedom struggle, its various stages and important contributors or contributions from different parts of the country. Post-independence consolidation and reorganization within the country. Therefore, for the mains exam, the history of India from about the middle of the 18th century only will be asked. Therefore, we need not study the prehistoric, ancient or medieval history of India for the mains exam. But the syllabus of UPSC Prelims General Studies 1 mentions that the paper will have questions on history of India and Indian national movement. This is a broad classification unlike that of mains. As the time period is not mentioned specifically, we need to learn ancient to modern history and questions do come from all these areas too. Now let's see how important Indian history is for both prelims and mains exams. From 2013 to 2021, about 1 to 3 questions were there from ancient Indian history. 1 to 4 questions were there from medieval Indian history. And 4 to 13 questions were there from modern Indian history for the prelims examinations every year. For mains, in GS1 paper, about 2 to 8 questions were there from Indian history part of the syllabus since 2013. Among those, most questions were related to the freedom struggle of India. There was an average of two questions related to Indian freedom struggle each year from 2013 to 2021. Now we'll be seeing the topics to be learnt for both the prelims and mains exams in the Indian history section. As I said in the last video, it's easy to remember if we learn it chronologically. So let's start with prehistoric age of India. Question mentioning prehistoric sites was asked in the year 2021. Consider the following pairs. Historical place, well known for one. Bursa Home, Rocket Shrines 2. Chandra Ketuga, Terracotta Art 3. Ganeshwar, Copper Artifact Which of the pairs given above is or are correctly matched? You can answer this question easily if you know that Bursa Home is a Neolithic site known for pit dwelling and Ganeshwar is a Chalcolithic site contemporary to Indus Valley Civilization. Even though not many questions were asked from this area, it's not advisable to ignore it. Under prehistoric age of India, you should learn about periodization of Indian prehistory, archaeological sources, different phases of Stone Age such as Paleolithic period, Mesolithic period, Neolithic period and Chalcolithic period. They are geographical distribution and characteristics. Next is Harappan civilization. Just like cultural, it's just like cultural, its historical aspects are also important for the prelims examination. Let's see how questions were asked from this topic. Which one of the following is not a Harappan site? Option A, Chanhu Daro. Option B, Kaut Diji. Option C, Sogaura. And Option D, Desalpur. Which of the following characterizes the people of Indus Valley Civilization? 1. They possessed great palaces and temples. 2. They worshipped both male and female deities. 3. They employed horse-drawn chariots. You have to choose the correct statement among these. Under this, you need to know about the origin and date of Indus Valley Civilization, its geographical locations, major cities, town planning, Harappan trade, agriculture, domestication of animals, weights and measures, lifestyle, art and crafts, economy and finally, different causes for the decline of Harappan culture. Next is about megalithic cultures. This portion is yet to ask for the exam. Still, you should have an idea about different megalithic cultures, geographical distribution and characteristics of pastoral and farming cultures outside Indus, development of community life, settlements, development of agriculture, crafts, pottery, iron industry, etc. Next comes the Vedic and post-Vedic periods. We can see many questions asked from this area in previous years. Here is an example. The religion of early Vedic Aryans was primarily of Option A, Bhakti, Option B, 
ഇമേജ് വേർഷിപ്പ് ആൻഡ് യജ്ഞാസ് ഓപ്ഷൻ സി വേർഷിപ്പ് ഓഫ് നേച്ചർ ആൻഡ് യജ്ഞാസ് ആൻഡ് ഓപ്ഷൻ ഡി വേർഷിപ്പ് ഓഫ് നേച്ചർ ആൻഡ് ഭക്തി ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് പോയിന്റ് ടു ബി ലേൺ അണ്ടർ ദിസ് ടോപ്പിക് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ടൈം പീരീഡ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് സോഴ്സസ് ഫോർ റീകൺസ്ട്രക്ടിംഗ് വേദിക് സൊസൈറ്റി ആൻഡ് കൾച്ചർ ജോഗ്രഫി ഓഫ് ദ റിഗ് വേദിക് പീരീഡ് ഏരിയാസ് ഓഫ് സെറ്റിൽമെന്റ് പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ എവല്യൂഷൻ ഓഫ് മൊനാക്കി സോഷ്യൽ ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ ഇക്കോണമി റിലീജിയസ് പ്രാക്ടീസസ് ആൻഡ് കൾച്ചർ അണ്ടർ ലേറ്റർ വേദിക് പീരീഡ് you need to know about geography of later vedic phases their areas of settlement political system social organization and varna system position of women economy religious practices and culture under mahajanapada period you need to know about different republics and monarchies 16 mahajanapadas their capitals especially about magadha its key dynasties which include hariyanka shishunaga and nanda dynasties then about persian invasions and alexander's invasion society and rise of urban centers polity administration and economy next is buddhism and jainism as we saw in culture and heritage syllabus in the previous video buddhism and jainism are important topics under history syllabus as well let's see some previous questions with reference to the religious practices in india the sthanikavasi sect belongs to option a buddhism option b jainism option c vaishnavism and d shaivism with reference to indian history who among the following is the future buddha yet to come to save the world option a avalokiteshwara option b lokeshwara c maitreya and d padmabani under buddhism you should learn about birth and life of buddha time period places associated with buddha teachings of buddha organization and sex of buddhism major buddhist literatures buddhist councils spread of buddhism to different countries and royal patronage causes for the decline of buddhism under jainism you should know about birth and life of mahavira its time period teachings of mahavira organization and sects of jainism major literatures related to jainism councils spread of jainism and its royal patronage next topic is the mauryan empire previous year questions coming under mauryan empire were mostly related to the emperor ashoka here are some examples who among the following rulers advised his subjects through this inscription whosoever praises his religious sect or blames other sects out of excessive devotion to his own sect with the view of glorifying his own sect he rather injures his own sect very severely option a ashoka b samudra gupta c harsha vardhana and option d krishna devaraya who of the following had first deciphered the edicts of emperor ashoka option a george beeler option b james princep c max muller and d william jones under mauryan empire you need to know about its foundation different sources for reconstruction of history of mauryan empire important rulers such as chandragupta maurya bindusara ashoka then about kaudilya and his artha shastra ashoka's edicts concept of dharma inscriptions pillars polity administration and economy under different rulers external contacts which include magasthenes next is post mauryan period we can find previous year prelims questions from this area too Which one of the following books of ancient India has the love story of the son of the founder of the Sunga dynasty? Option A, Swapna Vasavadatta. B, Malavika Agni Mitra. C, Mekha Dutta. And option D, Ratnavali. Under this, you must learn about Sungas, Kanvas, Indo-Greeks, Shakas, Kushanas, Western Kshatrapas, Shatavahanas, etc. Contacts with the outside world, urban centers, economy administration and polity under different kingdoms social conditions and lifestyle of people next comes early states and societies in eastern india deccan and southern india even though you can't find many previous prelims questions from this topic it's not advisable to leave this topic as well questions may come any time also learning this will help you to rule out options in mcqs so we need to remember important things coming under this topic which include karavela shatavahanas sangam age administration polity and economy external contacts urban centers trade guild 
etc. Next comes the Gupta period, which is among the favorite topics of UPSC. See how questions were asked from this topic. With reference to the period of Gupta dynasty in ancient India, the towns of Gandashala, Kadura and Chaul were well known as Option A. Ports handling foreign trade Option B. Capitals of powerful kingdoms Option C. Places of exquisite stone art and architecture Option D. Important Buddhist pilgrimage centers With reference to forced labor or vishti in India during the Gupta period, which one of the following statements is correct? Option A. It was considered a source of income for state, a sort of tax paid by the people. Option B. It was totally absent in the Madhya Pradesh and Katyava regions of the Gupta Empire. Option C. The forced labourer was entitled to weekly wages. And Option D. The eldest son of the labourer was sent as the forced labourer. Under this, you should be learning its time period, different sources, important rulers and their contributions, polity, administration and economy, coinage, land grants, decline of urban centres, Indian feudalism, social life, position of women, caste system, education, which include different educational institutions such as Nalanda, Vikramshila, Vallabhi, etc. Then literature, science and technology, other important dynasties and later Guptas. Next is about the rule of King Harshavarthana. His name appeared many times in previous year prelims question papers. See such a question in which his name is mentioned. Which of the following places defines the nature of the hundi generally referred to in the sources of the post-Harsha period? Option A. An advisory issued by the king to his subordinates. Option B. A diary to be maintained for daily accounts. Option C. A bill of exchange. And Option D. An order from the feudal lord to his subordinates. Under this, you need to know about the time period, Harsha's religious inclinations, Buddhism, polity, administration and economy, beginning of feudalism, society and culture, literature, his military conquest, external contacts, especially about the Chinese traveller Huyan Sang, also about post-Harsha period. Now, about different dynasties of southern India. This is also an expectable area for prelims. Here, you should learn about the Sangam period, its polity, society, economy, culture and literature. Then, about Cholas, Cheras and Pandyas, foreign dynasties, commercial contacts with the outside world, different schools of art existed in this period. Now comes the medieval history of India. A lot of questions were asked about the medieval period in previous years. See some examples. Consider the following events in the history of India. 1. Rise of Pratiharas under King Poja. 2. Establishment of Pallava power under Mahendravarman 1. 3. Establishment of Chola power by Parantaka 1. 4. Pala dynasty founded by Gopala. Here, you need to choose the correct chronological order of the above events. With reference to the economic history of medieval India, the term Arakatta refers to Option A. Bonded labour. Option B. Land grants made to military officers. Option C. Water will used in the irrigation of land. And Option D. Waste land converted to cultivated land. Consider the following pairs. Medieval Indian state, present region. 1. Champaka, central India. 2. Durgara, Jammu. 3. Kuluta, Malabar. Here, you need to choose the correctly matched pair. Under early medieval India, you should know about major political developments in northern India, which include origin and rise of Rajputs, about different dynasties such as Palas, Senas, Pratiharas, the tripartite conflict, polity, administration, economy and decline of trade, Indian feudalism, trade and commerce, cultural relations about different saints such as Shankaracharya, Ramanuja, Mathava, their philosophies, religion which include Bhakti cult, Sufism and different saints associated with these cults. Arrival of Islam in India, Art and Architecture. Next is about some provincial kingdoms existed during this period such as Chalukyas, Pallavas, Rashtrakudas, Vijayanagaras etc. Among these, Vijayanagara kingdom is very important. Here are some previous questions related to these kingdoms. With reference to the cultural history of medieval India, consider the following statements. 
One, Siddhas of Tamil region were monotheistic and condemned idolatry. Two, Lingayats of Kannada region questioned the theory of rebirth and rejected the caste hierarchy. Here, you have to choose the correct statement. Building Kalyana Mandaba was a notable feature in the temple construction in the kingdom of Option A. Chalukya Option B. Chandela Option C. Rashtrakuda and Option D. Vijayanagara Things to be learnt here include different kingdoms such as Pallavas, Chalukyas, Rashtrakudas, Hoysalas, etc. Major rulers and their contributions Polity, Administration, Economy, Society and Culture Next is Delhi Sultanate. Here is a previously asked question. Consider the following statements. 1. In the revenue administration of Delhi Sultanate, the in charge of revenue collection was known as Amil. 2. The Ikta system of Sultans of Delhi was an ancient indigenous institution. 3. The office of Mir Bakshi came into existence during the reign of Khilji Sultans of Delhi. Here also you need to choose the correct statement. Even though not many questions were asked from Delhi Sultanate in previous years, you should have a clear idea about the establishment of Delhi Sultanate, the Arab conquest of Sindh, which include Mahmud of Ghazni, Muhammad Khori, factors behind their victory and consequences, slave dynasty, consolidation, rulers and contributions, under Khaljis, Alauddin Khalji, his conquest and territorial expansion, agrarian and economic measures. Under Tughlaq's Kam, Muhammad Tughlaq, his major contributions, agrarian measures and bureaucracy. Then Firosha Tughlaq, his agrarian measures, achievements in civil engineering and public works, Sayyid dynasty and Lodhis. Provincial kingdoms and resistance by Indian chiefs, attacks by Mongols and other Turks, polity, administration and economy, society, culture and urbanization, scientific knowledge and legal system, foreign accounts, especially that of Ibn Battuta, then decline of Sultanate. Next is about different battles that took place in northern India, which include struggle between Ibrahim Lodi and Babur, the first battle of Panipat, issues that Babur had to face after the battle of Panipat, his struggle with Rana Sangha, problems of the eastern areas and the Afghans, Babur's contributions and significance of his advent into India. Conflicts between Humayun and Afghans, his tussles with Bahadur Shah and Sher Khan, Gujarat campaign and Bengal campaign. Now, the Mughal Empire, a crucial phase in Indian history. UPSC has asked many questions from this area in previous years. See these examples. With reference to Mughal India, what is or are the difference or differences between Jagirdar and Zamindar? 1. Jagirdars were holder of land assignments in lieu of judicial and police duties, whereas Zamindas were holders of revenue rights without obligation to perform any duty other than revenue collection. 2. Land assignments to Jagidas were hereditary and revenue rights for Zamindas were not hereditary. You need to choose the correct answer using the quotes given here. With reference to Mian Tansen, which one of the following statements is not correct? Option A. Tansen was the title given to him by Emperor Akbar. Option B. Tansen composed Thrupata on Hindu gods and goddesses. Option C. Tansen composed songs on his patrons. And Option D. Tansen invented many ragas. Who among the following Mughal emperors shifted emphasis of illustrated manuscripts to album and individual portrait? Option A. Humayun. B. Akbar. C. Jahangir and option D. Shah Jahan. This is a vast topic under which you should learn about the time period Sur Empire which include Sher Shah, his contributions, coinage, architecture, major, major rulers of Mughal Empire, especially about Akbar, his conquest, second battle of Panipat, expansion and consolidation of the kingdom, administration, polity, structure of government, establishment of Jagir and Mansab systems, Rajput policy, his religious policy which include relations with the ulama and social reforms, ibadat khana and religious debates, reorganization of madad i mash grants, sulhan i kul, deen ilahi, his struggle with the nobility, Akbar's concept of suzerainty, structure of the government which include central and provincial, 
the working of the government which include the ruler land revenue system the sala system mansabdari system and the army mukhal foreign policy include relation of akbar with uzbeks relations with iran shah jahan's bulk campaign mukhal persian relations climax and crisis of the mukhal empire which include rise of marathas under shivaji treaty of purandar aurangzeb and the dakani states jagirdari crisis now about different indian states existed in the 18th century under it marathas are quite important here is a previously asked mains question from this area the third battle of panipat was fought in 1761 why were so many empire shaking battles fought at panipat here you need to know about the marathas their policy of expansion advances into gujarat malwa doyab and punjab third battle of panipat shivaji his administration polity successors peshwas other indian states which include posles gaekwads holkas and sintias economic condition in the 18th century bahmani kingdom bengal avadh the sikh rajput states jats hyderabad mysore next is about the later mukals were you should learn about bahadur shah 1 struggle for visarath rajput fs marathas and the dakkan sulfika khan and jahandar shah said brothers nizamul mulk foreign invasions which include that of nadir shah rise of regional states now we are going to discuss about the different sub topics in modern history everything coming under modern history is very important as far as prelims as well as mains is considered under it first comes the advent of europeans into india here The things to be learnt include Portuguese in India under it de Almeida I'll be quick causes of failure of Portuguese empire in India Dutch Danes English and French in India Anglo French rivalry first Carnatic war rise of Hyderabad state then the second and third Carnatic wars causes of English success next is specifically about British expansion in India as i said this is also quite important see some previous questions which of the following statements does not apply to the system of subsidiary alliance introduced by lord bellasley option a maintain a large standing army at others expense option b to keep india safe from napoleonic danger option c to secure a fixed income for the company and option d to establish british paramountcy over the indian states the staple commodities of export by the english east india company from bengal in the middle of the 18th century were option a oil seeds raw cotton and opium option b sugar salt zinc and lead option c copper silver gold spices and tea and option d cotton silk salt peter and opium here you should be thorough with the major points regarding the british expansion into bengal anglo maratha wars anglo sikh wars the subsidiary alliance system doctrine of lapse the conquest of sindh annexation of auth the important characteristics of early british administration which include the dual system charter acts judicial system economic policies different phases such as phase of mercantilism phase of free trade and phase of finance imperialism then about different land revenue systems which include riotwari mahalwari and permanent settlement then drain of wealth theory various impacts of british administration is also a repeatedly asked topic here are some previous questions examine how the decline of traditional artisanal industry in colonial india crippled the rural economy examine critically the various facets of economic policies of the british in india from mid 18th century till independence important things to be learned under this include industrialization impoverishment of peasantry emergence of new land relations ruin of old zamindars stagnation and deterioration of agriculture commercialization of indian agriculture development of modern industry rise of indian bourgeois economic drain now comes religious and social reform movements this topic also should be given great stress this topic also appears repeatedly in both prelims and mains see some sample questions which of the following statements is or are correct regarding brahmo samaj 1 it opposed idolatry 2 it denied the need for a priestly class for interpreting the religious texts 
Three, it popularized the doctrine that the Vedas are infallible. You need to choose the correct answer using the quotes given here. The women's questions arose in modern India as a part of the 19th century social reform movement. What are the major issues and debates concerning women in that period? Examine the linkages between the 19th century Indian Renaissance and the emergence of national identity. Here, you need to know about the different factors which gave rise to reform movements, social and ideological basis of these movements, social reform components, major contributors, legislative measures for women, struggle against caste-based exploitation, reform movements among Hindus, Muslims, Parsis and Sikhs, positive and negative impacts of these movements. Revolt of 1857 or Sepoy Mutiny is yet another focus area. Here are some previous questions. 1. The revolt of 1857 was a culmination of the recurrent big and small local rebellions that had occurred in the preceding 100 years of British rule. Elucidate. Question number 2. Explain how the uprising of 1857 constitutes an important watershed in the evolution of British policies towards colonial India. Important things that need to be learnt regarding the revolt of 1857 include various causes such as economic, political, administrative, socio-religious and immediate causes. Influence of outside events, beginning and spread of the revolt, storm centres and leaders, causes of failure, its consequences, administrative changes after 1857 in legislature, army and foreign policy. Now comes the freedom struggle. Here are some questions. With reference to the period of Indian freedom struggle, which of the following was over recommended by the Nehru report? 1. Complete independence for India. 2. Joint electorates for reservation of seats for minorities. 3. Provision of fundamental rights for the people of India in the constitution. You need to select the correct answer using the quotes given here. Why did moderates fail to carry conviction with the nation about their proclaimed ideology and political goals by the end of 19th century? Here, you need to know all the important incidents and events in chronological order which include factors in growth of modern nationalism, political associations before Indian National Congress which include Banga Pasha Prakashika Sabha, Bengal British India Society, East India Association, Pune Savajainik Sabha, etc. Early nationalist methodology, contributions of modern nationalist, militant nationalism, the extremist ideology, the Swadeshi and boycott movement, moderate extremist split, government repression of Swadeshi movement, revolutionary terrorism, revolutionary activities before World War I, Moli Minto reforms of 1909, revolutionary activity during First World War, such as the Gatha program, Home Rule League movement, Lucknow session of Indian National Congress, Mondego Chumsford reforms, its provisions and drawbacks. Questions from Gandhian phase of freedom struggle appears in the question paper every year, either for prelims or mains or both. So, if you learn this topic, you'll definitely get one or more questions. Here are some previous questions. What was the reason for Mahatma Gandhi to organize a Satyagraha on behalf of the presence of Keda? One. The administration did not suspend the land revenue collection in spite of a drought. 2. The administration proposed to introduce permanent settlement in Gujarat. You need to choose the correct option using the quotes given here. Mahatma Gandhi undertook fast unto death in 1932 mainly because Option A. Round table conference failed to satisfy Indian political aspirants. Option B. Congress and Muslim League had differences of opinion. Option C. Ramsey MacDonald announced the communal award and option D, none of the statements A, B and C given above is correct in this context. Now, some sample mains questions. Question number one, how different would have been the achievement of Indian independence without Mahatma Gandhi? Discuss. Question two, many voices had strengthened and enriched the national movement during the Gandhian phase. Elaborate. Three, discuss the role of women in the freedom struggle especially during the Gandhian phase. 4. Throw light on the significance of the thoughts of Mahatma Gandhi in the present times. Under this, you have to learn about Gandhi's activism in South Africa, Gandhi's early activism in India, which include Champaran Satyagraha, Ahmedabad Mill Strike, 
ഖേദ സത്യാഗ്രഹ ആൻഡ് റാവ്ലോത്ത് സത്യാഗ്രഹ ഖിലാഫത്ത് നോൺ കോർപ്പറേഷൻ മൂവ്മെന്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഡിമാൻഡ്സ് ടെക്നിക്സ് നാഗ്പൂർ കോൺഗ്രസ് Chauri Chaura incident The major events during the freedom struggle need to be learned thoroughly in chronological order which include Swarajist and no changes emergence of new forces such as Marxism socialist ideas socialist ideas persons agitations trade unionism caste movements Hindustan Socialist Republican Association its activities leaders ideology revolutionaries in Bengal especially Surya Sen and his associates Growth of Communalism, Simon Commission, Nehru Report of 1928, Calcutta Congress Session of 1928, Lahore Congress Session of 1929, which set complete independence as the goal. Civil Disobedient Movement, which include Dandi March, Salt Satyagraha, No Tax Campaign, Cunningham Circular, No Rent Campaign. Then, First Round Table Conference, Gandhi Irwin Pact of 1931, Karachi Congress Session, Second Round Table Conference, Communal Award of Ramsey MacDonald, Government of India Act of 1935, Second World War, Its Impacts on Indian Freedom Struggle, Linlith Goose Statement of 1939, Congress Response, Pakistan Resolution, August Offer of 1940, Individual Civil Disobedient Movement, Crips Mission of 1942, Objections of Congress and Muslim League. Quit India movement is another repeatedly asked topic. Here are some previous questions. Quit India movement was launched in response to Option A, Cabinet Mission Plan Option B, Crips Proposals C, Simon Commission Report and Option D, Waywell Plan Next question With reference to Indian freedom struggle Usha Mehta is well known for Option A, running the secret Congress radio in the wake of Quit India movement Option B, participating in the second round table conference C, leading a contingent of Indian National Army And Option D, assisting in the formation of interim government under Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru Which one of the following observations is not true about the Quit India movement of 1942? Option A it was a non violent movement option B it was led by Mahatma Gandhi option C it was a spontaneous movement and option D it did not attract the labor class in general here you should know about the causes various leaders activities and parallel governments associated with quit india movement then see rajagopal acharya formula of 1944 desai liaquat pact waywell plan elections to central and provincial assemblies announced in august 1945 announcement of a constituent assembly after war ina agitations its features and three upsurges the proposals interpretations and acceptance of cabinet mission plan atlee statement of 1947 mountbatten plan of june 3 1947 finally indian independence act of 1947 some of the topics need to be learned separately this include evolution of indian civil service under development of civil services you need to know about different legislations such as indian civil services act of 1861 agency committee on public services 1886 monfort reforms of 1919 lee commission of 1924 and government of india act of 1935 then comes development of education here you should remember charter act of 1813 Orientalist Anglicist controversy Macaulay's minute efforts of Thomson Woods dispatch of 1854 Hunter commission Indian Universities Act of 1904 Government resolution on education policy of 1913 Sadler University commission Education under Dayaki Harto committee of 1929 Vartha scheme of basic education of 1937 Surgeon plan of education Kothari education commission development of vernacular education development of technical education and evaluation of british policy on education then about evolution of police system evolution of indian judiciary and development of press upsc has a habit of asking questions about the important personalities associated with the indian freedom struggle for both the exams see some examples consider the following statements The most effective contribution made by Dada Bhai Nauroji to the cause of Indian national movement was that he one exposed the economic exploitation of India by the British two 
interpreted the ancient indian text and restored the self confidence of indians 3 stressed the need for eradication of all the social evils before anything else you need to choose the correct statements using the quotes given here second question which of the following parties were established by dr b r ambedkar 1 the peasants and workers party of india 2 all india scheduled caste federation 3 the independent labor party here also you need to choose the correct option now mains questions one discuss the contributions of maulana abul kalam azad to pre and post independent india two in many ways lord dalhousie was a founder of modern india elaborate three evaluate the policies of lord curzon and their long term implications on the national movement you need to know about the significant personalities such as Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Swami Vivekananda, Swami Dayananda Saraswati, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, Keshav Chandra Sen, Sri Ram Krishna Paramahamsa, M G Rana Day, Bal Ganga Thar Tilak, Ambedkar, Walla Bhai Patel, Annie Besant, Syed Ahmed Khan, Baba Dayal Das, Pandita Rama Bai, Sarojini Naidu, Jodi Ba Phule, Governor Generals during British rule and their contributions. Questions about civil rebellions and tribal uprisings were also asked many times in previous years. See an example. Which among the following provided a common factor for tribal insurrection in India in the 19th century? Option A: Introduction of a new system of land revenue and taxation of tribal products. Option B: Influence of foreign religious missionaries in tribal areas. Option C: rise of a large number of money lenders traders and revenue farmers as middlemen in tribal areas and option d the complete disruption of the old agrarian order of the tribal communities you need to learn about the major rebellions in bengal and eastern india such as sanyasi revolt chua uprising ho rising kol mutiny kant uprising santal rising ahom revolt khasi uprising etc in western india such as bill uprising kach rebellion etc in western india such as bill uprising kach rebellion etc in south india such as polygast revolt revolt of velu tambi rampa revolt etc rebellions of north india include wahabi movement kukka revolt etc peasant movements is a similar topic which is also asked in the exam several times before here is an example the demand for the tabaga peasant movement in bengal was for option a the reduction of the share of the landlords from one half of the crop to one third option b the land of ownership of land to peasants as they were the actual cultivators of the land option c the uprooting of zamindari system and the end of serfdom and option d writing off old peasant debts the important things you need to know regarding peasant movements include peasantry under colonialism early peasant movements such as indigo revolt papna agrarian leagues Deccan riots their features changed nature of peasant movements after 1847 their weaknesses later movements such as kisan sabha movements eka movement etc mapilla revolt bardoli satyagraha all india kisan congress then after world war tebhaga movement telangana movement etc significance of peasant movements you need to know about working class movements as well under it you should learn about earlier efforts for the progress of working class by various publications such as bharat shram jeevi of shashipada banerji din bandhu of lokhande kesari and maharata of tilak etc aituc its formation leaders activities the trade union act of 1926 meerut conspiracy case of 1929 Questions were asked from the post independent Indian history too. Discuss whether the formation of new states in recent times is beneficial or not for the economy of India. Second question, highlight the importance of new objectives that got added to the vision of Indian independence since the 20s of the last century. Third question, critically examine the compulsions which prompted India to play decisive roles in the emergence of Bangladesh. Four analyze the circumstances that led to tashkent agreement in 1966 discuss the highlights of the agreement here you should learn about consolidation and reorganization within the country 
ഫോർമേഷൻ ഓഫ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ്സ് പൊളിറ്റി അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേഷൻ ഫോറിൻ റിലേഷൻസ് വിച്ച് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് വാസ് വിത്ത് പാകിസ്ഥാൻ ആൻഡ് ചൈന താഷ്കൻഡ് അഗ്രിമെന്റ് എമർജൻസ് ഓഫ് ബംഗ്ലാദേശ് ദെൻ ലാൻഡ് റിഫോംസ് അഗ്രികൾച്ചറൽ റിഫോംസ് ഭൂതാൻ ആൻഡ് ഗ്രാംദാൻ മൂവ്മെന്റ്സ് So that's about the different subtopics coming under the syllabus of Indian history. Now let's see where do you study these from? First and foremost is obviously NCRT textbooks. It is better to read 5th class to 12th class NCRT books. Tamil Nadu state boards 11th and 12th class textbooks as must read books. Class 11th book covers ancient and medieval history and class 12th book covers freedom struggle and world history. Its new edition is a revised and colorful one. India's Ancient Past by R. S. Sharma is an authoritative book on India's ancient history which is very useful for prelims. For medieval Indian history, you can go for Satish Chandra's History of Medieval India which covers the details about the sequence of events and the empires that governed different parts of the country from the 8th to 18th century. For modern Indian history you can depend on Bipin Chandra's History of Modern India. Bipin Chandra's India's Struggle for Independence is another book which will give you an in-depth and detailed overview on India's independence movement. But if you have very less time and need to finish the portions faster you can read Rajiv Ahir's A Brief History of Modern India by Spectrum Publications. It's a small book but covers almost all major points. that are covered in Bipin Chandra's book. If you have enough time, you can also read books like Ramachandra Guha's India After Gandhi. Nitin Singhania's Indian Art and Culture gives a comprehensive account of the art and cultural aspects as we have seen in the last video. You should also read the articles in the Hindu newspaper because current affairs related history topics can also be asked for the exam. Now, it's time for some secret tips to score better. First of all, you need to cultivate an enthusiasm for history. Proper understanding of the syllabus and the pattern of questions is a must. Prepare a proper timetable and practice model questions every day. Read NCRT textbooks as many times as you can. You'll definitely get a good number of questions directly from the NCRT textbooks. especially for the prelims exam such as medieval dictionary terms making self notes will help you remember things better this will also enable you to revise quickly in the last minute make a chart of the important events and years and hang it in your room so that you can revise it whenever you see it some terminologies especially medieval dictionary terms can be written in a small book so that you can carry it in your pocket just keep it open and see while you are having food or traveling read it every day and mark the things you have learned so that you can focus on the remaining ones also ensure that you have learned the current affairs related history topics thoroughly so we have seen the syllabus of indian history its weightage in both prelims and mains exams analyzed previous year questions discussed the various sub topics and their importance in the exams study materials required and finally some secret tips to score better if you like this video subscribe our channel and support us thank you